If y'all love black people, like this, comment, and share if y'all love black people. Good morning. Come help me get my room ready for a super chill last day before winter break. Gotta start with all the string lights. And my lamps because I hate the fluorescent overheads. Including my very cool LEDs. Then we gotta get that smart board set up. And we cannot forget about the diffuser because these are 14 year olds. And that's it. That is my imperfect, not cleaned up for TikTok, super chill room on the last day before break. I hope that you're having a super chill day today. And whatever you're doing, I'll see you in 2022. Um, y yeah? Like, that's the whole point of this post. I am frustrated. Like, you're gonna tell me you don't walk in your communities and see poverty and people barely getting by and you're not frustrated? You see the wealth gap between people who can't even afford to get the healthcare that they need and you're not frustrated? But I don't know, maybe you're okay with people having to work two, three jobs and still not being able to get by. Maybe you're okay with people working for Tesla and other major corporations and not being paid a living wage still and fully being exploited so people like Elon Musk can get richer. But I hate to break it to you. You're most likely closer to being poor on the street than you are to being rich like Elon Musk. Elon Musk, like many other billionaires, including Bill Gates, because apparently a lot of you think that I love Bill Gates for some reason. Um, to be clear, abolish billionaires means all billionaires, not just one or two. I mean, literally every billionaire should not exist as billionaires. Um, but anyways, Elon Musk is a king of virtue signaler. He does everything that makes him and his businesses look good. That's what a good business person would do, but still it is intensely virtue signaling. Like all of you love this $11 billion tax bill um, as if that's not 4% of his net worth, 4%. Literally every profession, except for like maybe a handful, pays more than 4% of their net worth in taxes. Whether you're talking about the janitor, the cook, the server, a police officer, a teacher, they all pay more than 4%. And let's not forget that Elon Musk went to the UN and said he would solve world hunger with $6 billion as long as there was a laid out transparent plan of how to do that. And they gave it to him and he hasn't done anything with it, but he did by Twitter. Like Elon Musk did not work hard for his money. I'm sorry, I, you're not gonna convince me that he did. He exploited workers for his money. He benefited from a emerald mine in South Africa that his dad ran. He benefited from rich mommy and daddy. I am willing to bet you that a large majority of people would become very successful millionaires and billionaires, maybe not to the level of Elon Musk, but would be very successful and wealthy if they had handouts from mommy and daddy. And furthermore, no, that is literally the last thing that I want because Elon Musk or any other billionaire buying a NGO or the UN would just further exacerbate these issues. Like you made a whole point about how certain countries have their GDP dependent on certain NGOs as if that's not a byproduct of the intense exploitation done by billionaires and multinational corporations. Here's an example of how to set boundaries with family members around anti-fat bias. Honey, I've been meaning to talk to you about your weight. You've gotten so big and I'm really concerned about your health. I just want you to live a long life and be healthy. Don't you want to lose weight? Okay, I understand you think you're helping me, but you're not. I need you to listen and understand that you are causing harm right now. Criticizing my weight does not add anything good to my life. It only disparages me and weakens our relationship. Ugh, I'm just concerned about your health. Don't be. I'm an adult and my health is not your concern. My body is not up for discussion and if you don't respect that, then I'm going to end this conversation. You're so sensitive. This is just a medical fact. You have to lose weight to be healthy. 
Well, I told you that my body is not up for discussion and you've crossed that boundary. I told you I was going to end the conversation if you did that, so that's what's happening. So I'm going to leave that there whilst I speak to you about this. First off, I want to make clear that if you're cis, I don't care if you use she, they or he, they pronouns, if you identify as cis, I don't want to see any comments from you. I'm trans, specifically non-binary, I'm agender, so I know what I'm talking about. Non-binary can be an identity, however, it is also an umbrella term. Gender fluid is not man or woman. Therefore, it is non-binary. Gender fluid isn't just going between man and woman, it's, be it's going through any of these non-binary identities. Non-binary does not mean a gender. Non-binary doesn't mean genderless. I am a gender. I know what I'm talking about. Stitch this and tell me about the most ridiculous treatment a licensed medical per- I'm sick in bed, so we're gonna ignore how I look and what I sound like, but I have a condition known as periodic paralysis, which means that ever so often for an amount of time, I get paralyzed. Whether that just be like a numbing feeling or like I literally fall down and I can't like, get back up. It usually affects my legs more than anything, but sometimes my hands and arms too. And much like this original uh, TikToker, I was not in the office for my periodic uh, paralysis. I was there for my anemia. But this doctor, my GP mind you, decided to ask me if I had ever thought about stopping birth control because that might solve my periodic paralysis as if that had anything to do with the issue or and could solve anything fuck out my way when you see me i'm rolling with the lgbt Lana Del Rey is another great example of white feminism, you guys. And the reality is we have no more room for white victimhood from multi-million dollar celebrities who pick and choose when to speak on feminist issues. It It's not helping the movement. And if you are a multi-million dollar celebrity and you decide to call yourself a feminist or an advocate for gender equality, then you need to do it right or not do it at all. We don't have any more room for it, okay? We have moved past the need for girl boss feminism and, you know, praising, you know, white women for being in oppressive capitalist positions like men. And that's why I kind of had an issue with Taylor's song, The Man. It was praised as this feminist anthem, and I definitely get Taylor has had to overcome sexist obstacles. And I'm not trying to take that away from her. But if we're gonna talk about gender inequality in the music industry, let's talk about TLC. Look up what happened to them. It's really fucked up. Again, this is just constructive criticism, not attacking anyone, and I'm gonna talk more about this in the next part. Tell me you're a male feminist without telling me you're a male feminist. I think feminism is really important, but what's the point if it's bi intersectional, right? You want to make yeah, sure you're. Yeah, so that's mostly all correct. Men. I actually have a cousin that's a woman, and she told me about how. No doubt this will only reach the normal 154 people that I tend to reach, but if you're going to follow anyone, uh, please let it be her perspective. She is my hero, and probably a whole bunch of other people's heroes. I am not kidding when I say I have not come across. Um, a woman like this in my entire life. I am 42 years old and I feel like I'm just waking up for the first time in 42 years. She is incredible, um, probably one of the most intelligent people I've ever come across and she is who you want at the head of the table. So follow her, she's amazing. Uh, Evelyn, please keep doing what you're doing. You're waking a bunch of us the fuck up and uh, I can't tell you how appreciated you are. A snack you should try. And the Peter Piper picked the peck of motherfucking pickled peppers is this shit. Mm -mm. I'm calling the motherfucking FBI. Shanice. You said my name wrong. Shanice. 
Okay, okay that's fine. Literally. You're actually such a little sass pot. No, but the thing is... And I love it. No, but listen, <laughs> I right? Love it. Yeah, I know. I it's don't think Chinese. anyone understands how stressful it is for me when people say my name wrong. This is a prime example of the discrimination that Berkwick faced daily. Okay, we understand that NASA's name is probably shortened and anglicized because people without color didn't really bother to pronounce it and he exp probably experienced a lot of racism and discrimination, whatever. But shenanigans and struggles? Shenanigans and struggles. It's so much more important and of course she should need to acknowledge all that other yeah, stuff. Yeah, why would she acknowledge that? I mean, imagine that? being named supercalifragilistic expialidocious and people don't even bother to say it correctly. Exactly. And like, sure, NASA has his own struggles with being brown, but like, shenanigans? Scottish struggles? Like, yeah, Scottish struggles are real. And and people Brunette without color really have to deal with this ignorance on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I know we like to say health at every size, but since I'm disabled, I feel like that won't always apply to me. So what I propose we start saying is hot at every size, because that will always be true.